Hello and welcome to part 18 and this time I'm going to take a look at something called spline thicken and spline thicken is uh, actually just referring to a material node so this is going to be used to optimize the the mesh we have here so in order to do a little comparison with this i'm going to start off by merging this actor here it popped up here i'm just gonna go all the way down and then merge so just call this sm normal and if we open it up and we see we have 7.1 k triangles so I just want to do this before we get started, so we have a kind of a, an idea how complex this particular mesh is. So the spline thicken node, as you can see, I already made, I did a little organization stuff here off video, so it's no big deal really. But if we make a new material and call this spline thicken range, and right click and say Spline thicken, and we're going to get this one here. And at first, it might look a little bit overwhelming. Uh, and to be honest, it is a little bit uh, overwhelming because I frankly don't know exactly how this works. But I found a way to get some of it to work, and that part I'm going to be demonstrating here. I know that the documentation will be eventually updated with this. If it's not already uh, but what we are going to do here to begin with is to hook up the normal and the well position offset and one, once we do that we're gonna get two warnings down here saying we're missing function input for the width uh, tip and width base so these two require a scalar so we're just gonna hook something into that and then it's not going to complain about anything So you can see this is the material we get and it looks kind of weird and it's a little bit hard to see what it does actually. So if I drag in, I think I have a range somewhere here, this lock here, and I apply that material here, then this is what we're going to get. And just by using it like this is not really going to give us anything. So it's kind of hard to see what it does if you just try and pull it in and and uh, see if you can use it. So what I'm going to do is to show you uh, what I found out and how you can use this. Um, so to begin with, we want to jump into our favorite uh, 3D editing program. In my case, it's 3D Max, 3ds Max, and we're going to make a plane here. I'm just going to make it like this and I'm going to set the number of segments length segments to 8 and width segments to 1 and that means we're going to get this little strip here um, and we also need to I, I put my other log I put it standing so I'm just going to do the same here. If you have the, your things lying down, then by all means, just go ahead and use that. So I'm just going to move this up to the top here, I believe. I can set something like snap this to edge segment. Go to the left, not the front. And then set it here. So this should be, I don't know why it's not, but it should have been, maybe it's because of my pivot point actually. Let me just adjust that one moment. Uh, pivot point. Okay, so something around here. So now it's uh, set to the bottom. I'm just gonna un take effect pivot only and then I'm gonna 
move it down yeah so it's snapped i don't think this is really necessary to be honest but i like to have it at the at the bottom so i'm just gonna go reset my x form like that <coughs> excuse me and then for this i'm gonna scale this down to be really really thin and the reason for that is i'm gonna try and explain as good as i can uh, is that uh, the spline thicken does actually what the name implies it thickens a spline so it's not it's gonna take this little spline mesh thing and then it's going to thicken it so it's going to pretend make an illusion of this being this wide so we don't uh, we want this to be fairly thin just like this so with this i'm gonna um, also make sure to check my uv so i'm gonna go to my unwrap uvw and open the uv editor and check how the uv is laid out so this is the u direction and this is the the v direction so depending on how you see it um, and you can see the the detail is going upwards so it's actually the same orientation as it's standing so we want it to be thickened along uh, the this direction this vertical direction i mean the, the, the u direction so just need to make sure that when you put this you that your uvs are laid out like this in case it's uh, for some reason uh, laid out like like this then it's not not a catastrophe or anything just need to do a little extra thing inside the material so for now i'm just going to keep it like it is <clears throat> So I'm can, I can just collapse all this and then export it. Okay. So now let's import the plane I just made. And import and if we ch try for just for for fun to drag this plane in and we see this is how it looks and it's not really interesting if we set the material to be this mst branch then we're gonna just get this so it doesn't really look like it's doing anything but you will see that it's yeah it is actually not doing anything at the moment and that's because we uh, need to do something so the width base we didn't set <clears throat> so let's set this to like something like five and then hit save Okay, that was unexpected. Uh, am I missing something? Mm. The normal goes into the normal. I may need to check. So if we click this big note here and say two sided. Okay, there we go. So you, what you will see now is that it appears that this is a cylinder, sort of. Because no matter uh, how you look at it, it's going to be appear thick. And that is actually what this does. <clears throat> so if we, op oops, if we open up the material again and try and add a different scalar parameter here, so we set the tip to be zero and the bottom to be five. 
and then save. And we're going to get this kind of effect. And it appears to be a little bit off, like it's going in. So I don't really know if you need to maybe set this to 0 0.5 or something. All right, anyway. <clears throat> so the thing is, we also want the material on this. So I'm going to take, uh, let's see, let's take this one or the not the material, the, um, the texture. I have this old tree bark wallpaper. And I want to drag that onto my base color. And I also want a normal map. I don't have a normal map in here, so I guess this one is gonna work. I mean, yeah, this is gonna work. I, I'm too too lazy to make a new normal map. I could pull this through um, ex, um, uh, Indo and create a normal map, but that's another story. So with the normal map, as far as I can see, the way to put this in because I'm putting putting this in here. If, if I just put it into the normal here, let's just set this them both to five. So now we get something and it looks kind of dark or something. So it doesn't really seem to work now. If I set my normal back again, and you'll see that it's getting lit more correctly. Which I think it's being, it's doing this the opposite way. Yeah, I have a feeling there's something wrong with this normal. I, I think it needs to be flipped or something. Uh, but anyway, that might be something with the spine taken. I just noticed this. Okay, so anyway, if I want this normal map to be plugged in and utilized anyway, so I, there's a uh, note called additional normal. I hope that this is going to affect the look. It does something. So it seems to be affecting this somehow. So anyway, as you can see, this can actually create quite a convincing uh, piece of um, tree uh, branch. So instead of using it just like this, let's just put it to use on the tree here by switching this out and find our plane. And now we just let the compiler run and then we get this stuff here I'm just gonna save so you can see this is actually looking like a 3d object now we kind of lost the thickness control now because it's the same thickness all over the place uh, but that's something we can sort out Before I do that, I'm just going to open up the material again and just mention one more thing. Inside 3D Max, I mentioned that you had to have your UVs uh, laid out in a certain way. So you needed to have them laid out like this. And in case you don't, uh, don't want that or you have it the other way around, then you can just make a boolean and set the expand U or V channel to false. It's going to be true per default. So if you have it like I have it, then you don't really need that one. The world position offset, I don't know. It's uh, about it's if you have something else happening in world position, which needs to be applied, maybe. I'm not entirely sure. I have it. You can actually uh, double click this one and then you can pick this apart and see if you can re uh, understand what is going on. Honestly, I did open it and 
I ended up closing it pretty fast. I just noticed that they have a absolute wall position thing and a camera position and that was kind of what I needed to know. <clears throat> um, so eventually I might dive deeper into this one. So anyway, we want to um, see if we can sort out the scaling because right now, yeah, as I said, they are all the same scale. And if we take a look at the tree generator, luckily we have quite a few things uh, we're doing with the scaling at the moment. So let's just, oops, that was render tree. So you will also see that I commented and restructured things a little bit just to make it more easy to look at. So we have the scale stuff here um, and we set the local or the start scale and the end scale and then we set this and this works just fine if we have a, a cylinder but when we are using the spline mesh uh, spline thicken material uh, this doesn't really have any effect so in order to get this to work we are going to be uh, looking at how we can modify the these values here uh, or this value here so this since this is only going to allow us to put in one value uh, a start and the end uh, if we just give it like this then we are going to get a bunch of small triangles instead as you will see and this is not really not what we want we want this to be progressively uh, thinner uh, along the end here so in order to do that, we can use Vertex Paint to control the width instead. So I'm going to hook both of them up and then I'm going to drag in a Vertex Paint, um, Vertex Color, and we can take this for now, this 5, and we can just multiply this by, let's say, the red channel, and we can hook both of these up up to both the base and the tip. You might be wondering why I hooked them up to both the base and the tip and that's because we are going to be painting in gradients and when it comes out it's going to it's you're going to see that this actually does work. So for now let's just compile this. And you know when we vertex paint we uh, we normally or if, well, I didn't really know about this technique before, but uh, you, you normally just paint in here, select something, and then you paint along the vertices, uh, some weights with different colors, red, green, blue, or alpha. But what we're going to do here is actually to procedurally generate the paint. And that means if we make a little more space here, and then here we drag out the local spline, spline mesh, and we type in paint. We have three um, nodes to you nodes to you paint. One can remove painted vertices, um, so it's going to remove the paint, and one is going to paint with a single color, and one is going to loop between two colors. And this is actually exactly what the one we want to use here because we want this to be progressively thinner towards the ends. And if we remember from uh, somewhere in the beginning, I set this to the C axis, so I'm going to set this to C. So let's move this out of the way here, and let's set a start color, and also an end color. And the, I picked the red color, so I'm just going to uh, copy my, uh, take my start scale and plug that into the red, and my end scale and plug that in to the end red. So if we now compile and save. <clears throat> we'll see that nothing happened yet. 
and that's probably because this material here is probably wrong um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a new node to this so we can control this um, I'm not entirely sure this is correct but anyway um, let's call this a branch material And let's put it on the branch and type in um, something like that. And we want to make this public and move it up here. So now that we set it, uh, let's go all the way to the beginning here and make some more space and then take this branch material and create a dynamic material instance and the material we're going to base this on is the branch material so whatever the user sets we're going to create a dynamic material instance version of this and that Material we want to set, do something about it in a moment. So I'm just going to make a local variable for that because we're going to need to um, refer to this in a moment. Local dynamic branch material. Okay, let's see. Uh, so at the end here, we paint this stuff here. And then we also want to set the material for the spline mesh. So get that and then set material. Just need a little bit more space. And the material we want to set it to is the local dynamic branch material. Um, so if we select our actor out here and select uh, the MST branch. So now we have the correct material and we compile. Uh, we still don't get anything for a reason. Vertex color. We have the red. And we have the normal. And did I save this? And did I paint? The red. And the green. Oh, that's a funny thing. Yes, you see, nothing is happening right now. And the thing is, if I set the static mesh here, and if I for some reason set it do something with the material before I set my static mesh, then it doesn't work. I'm not entirely sure I understand why, but uh, it doesn't. So we need to do this after you set the static mesh. It's probably because if you want to set a material and it, it doesn't have a static mesh, then it doesn't know what to do with it. So it just goes out into nothingness. So anyway. Now we have it uh, working in, and we can see that it's actually scaling things as it should. Okay, so in order to compare this, let's take this and merge actors and say merge and sm uh, 
Um, okay. No idea what that was about. So now I'm just going to ignore it. So if we drag this out, we're going to see that we have a um, static mesh now, uh, but we're missing the material. So we're just going to set that. And that's going to bring up this. <clears throat> so you will notice that the, the width calculation was lost, or in other words, our um, vertex paint. So let's do this again. We go down and merge axis, and all the way down, we have a setting called bake vertex data. So merge, and just overwrite that one. And then we have a tree. So this one is a lightweight copy of the, the original tree, looking like it has a thickness. So if I open up this one, you can see it has 1.5, so almost 1.6 K triangles, and the one I did with the cylinders have 7K, 7.1K. So it's quite a difference in this case. I think it's 4 point something, uh, a factor of 4 point something. Okay, uh, did I have anything else I wanted to show? Um, no. So just a finishing note I want to mention is that this paint vertices along axis is a really powerful node, I would say, because it allows you to paint both in the red, red green, blue uh, and alpha channel and do all kinds of things. And then you can have your material uh, be using this. So in my case here, yeah, I just use this for uh, the spline thicken. Oh, actually, I forgot one thing. We are still under half an hour, so I can quickly squeeze this in. We have this hard-coded five right now. So let's say I wanted to control this. Um, let's say I wanted to be able to scale this up. Right now, I'm trying to scale it up in both so it gets thicker. But you can see it just gets higher or taller. And the same here, if I try to scale this, it's just gonna go upwards. So in case I wanna be able to change the thickness also, uh, what I'm gonna do is to use that, um, yeah, I'm gonna use that uh, dynamic material I created because I did create it for a reason. I just forgot to say what I wanted to use it for. Um, so this five here, I'm gonna create, uh, convert this to a parameter and call this um, thickness. And let's go ahead and save that. <clears throat> and in the beginning, I have my material initialization stuff here. I just want to set this to something and that's something let's type in set dynamic sector scalar parameter value and this is the thickness and the value I want to set for this is going to be derived from the actor, the tree generator axis scale. Uh, like this. But the, the scale is a vector and I don't just want uh, a float really, so I'm just going to use uh, abuse the vector length so I get it into a float and this is going to be a zero 
a fairly small number. So I'm going to hard code a multiplier here, which I'm going to be setting to something like three, I think. And I might want to make a note here saying that this is just a hard coded value. So if we now compile, we can see that it gets thinner. So I can I can could decide maybe to say this should be like five instead, four. And now I can also you can see control the thickness. And it's also gonna grow thicker along with higher. So this is going to be pretty nifty. The only drawback of this is that my material over here doesn't know anything about that scalar parameter. It just has this value here. So it's going to have whatever size you have in your material uh, to begin with. So this default 5 is what it's going to have. So in case you need to control that, I guess you would need either, a, uh, what is it called? I forget. Um, uh, material parameter collection maybe and even then control or refer to them individually so you have a different set of sizes or something but um, it's, I would say it's kind of trivial to, to set up once you have generated a bunch of these um, so the last thing uh, let's do a wireframe so here we can see what it looks like in wireframe. You can actually also see that they are rotating. They keep pointing towards me. Which is pretty cool. And this is to compare the geometry for the one with the with the cylinders. Okay, I don't have any more for this episode. I hope this was useful and stay tuned uh, for the next. Well, I will hopefully take a look at how we can add some sway to the, the branches. Um, so I'm going to switch this back to the, because I'm not going to be using this right now. It may be able to combine, but I'm not going to take a look at that just yet. I'm going to set this back to my normal branch and my normal stem. My normal branch and my normal stem. Thank you. Did I change this one? No, I don't know. Ah, oh, this one. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're going to keep looking at how we can add some sway to this so it's gonna yeah be nice and interesting so stay tuned and bye